Well, hi, everyone. Uh, how education and professors can change the world. I wanted to be ambitious with the, with the title. By the way, we could add how education, professors, and universities can change the world. I truly believe I'm a university professor as well. They call me professor. I truly believe that universities can help to change the world, can help to create better societies. At the end of the day, we are teaching and training the, the leaders and the citizens of tomorrow. Yesterday, one of the students here, when they were preparing everything, like uh, a little bees working on everything, they asked me, she said, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah, okay, go ahead. Why are you here? I was like, okay, thank you for welcoming me. And he said, no, 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 I mean, don't, take it, don't take it wrong. But the idea is, it's strange for us that a professor, Spanish, who lived in India, who was in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh a few days back, came here. And what I believe is that professors should exchange together. If you, keep, if you think about it, universities is one of the few things that all the countries in the world have in common. Okay? So to demonstrate this, that I believe that we can change the world all together with education uh, and professors, I will give you four stories. Don't worry, I will try not to be uh, too long, but I want to share four little small stories with, with you. Keep in mind as well, I ask you to do an effort here. When I say professors, it's because I'm a professor, but it could be teacher, it could be mentor, it could be instructor, um, it could be um, kindergarten teacher, etc. Okay, so I will say professor, but just translate it in your head. I will ask you another effort. So this is not a chill talk. When you arrive, you just lay down and you listen to me. I will ask you to remember when you were in class, any class. For the students here, it's easier because they do that almost every day. But for the others, maybe uh, it's a bit far ago. So remember when you were in class, like could be kindergarten, primary, high school, university. Okay? Now imagine that, or remember, and we all had one like this. This is a worldwide thing. This person could be a lady, could be a guy, most of the time a guy, where you, th where you say, this person is stupid. This person is not smart. This person knows nothing. And it's most of the time the person that we laugh at. There was a person like this back in the 50s, 60s in Detroit. Just to give you the picture, Detroit, so USA, 50s, 60s, industrial city, huge gaps in the society. Very rich people, very poor people. As all the good stories, the person we will talk about today was in the poor part of the city, so at the poor school as well. His name was Ben Carson. Remember this name, maybe you know it. So Ben was, in your imagination, the stupid person. And everybody believed that. Everybody believed that uh, Ben was stupid. Even the professors, it was kind of the joke. So people were saying, oh, let's ask the question to Ben, because Ben is stupid, so we will laugh a bit. So even the professors were making fun of, of this guy. Even the, profess the, the professors as well, but the, the fathers, the, the parents of Ben were thinking, my son is stupid. Since the professor said it, it means that my son is stupid. Okay? It will get better huh, along the way. But the idea here is that a new professor arrived in town, and he arrived the first day, and he said, Ben, can you answer the question? I know that you know it. And Ben was like, me? But I know nothing. Everybody knows it. And he said, no, come to see me after class. And Ben was like, oh, man, again. Again, I will be punished. And the professor said, Ben, I don't understand you. You are a smart guy. You know things. You just need to believe in yourself. I will give you this book. You will read it. We will discuss it together. And they started doing that on a weekly basis, almost. What happened to Ben? Ben started to get better grades, to raise his hand, to gain in confidence, to answer questions. And his classmates were just amazed, like, wow, Ben is smart. Ben can be smart. Okay? The story could stop here. It's already, I hope, a good story. But it goes many steps forward. Do you want to know what happened to Ben? Do you want to know what happened to Ben Carson? Yeah? This is Ben Carson today. Ben Carson is the most famous neurosurgeon of all times. He definitely changed the uh, pace of humanity somehow. You see twins, I didn't find a better picture that wasn't disgusting. Those are twins that are supposed to be united by their heads. Before Ben, they tried to separate twins united by their brains, by their heads, six times. They all died. Ben Carson invented the way to do it, among other surgery techniques that I'm not able to explain here. 
I have a sentence that you can make it yours. And I say it like almost every day. The only difference between two persons is education. There is no such thing like someone good or bad at something. There is someone trained or not trained at something. Okay, so keep that, keep that in mind. For, for the persons who laugh at people who don't know, this is also a worldwide thing. Okay? Everywhere I go, I see this. When someone does not know something, we laugh. We make fun of this person. When actually there is a power in not knowing something. You know, if I ask you, do you know this, and you don't know it, your reaction most of the time will be to smile and to nod like this, to say, yes, when actually you don't know at all. If you tell me I don't know, I will explain it to you. That's why I call the power of not knowing something. So you will, you will learn. Keep in mind as well, when you laugh at people who don't know something, or who don't have the answer yet, maybe you are killing the next Ben Carson, the next person that will change the world. I'm just asking you here, maybe to change a bit your brain, a bit your uh, preconceived ideas on knowing and not knowing. If you don't know something, it's not an issue. You can always learn it. Okay. Is it only about teaching? I give you the example of this professor who came in town. I want to give you now a more personal... This is me with long hair, by the way. Uh, I want to give you a, a, an example, uh, a personal one from Cuba. It's not only about teaching, sharing knowledge. It's also about inspiring people, mentoring them. I was in Cuba three months back, July. If you know the situation in Cuba, you can go to a restaurant, they don't have water. Uh, toilet paper is like, a, is like a, a very rare, uncommon good. Okay, so that's kind of the situation right now. And I gave a talk, as you can uh, imagine, I give, that's my job, I give talks. Okay? So I gave this talk, and there was a guy there, uh, Michael. He's somewhere here, you will, you will, you will see him. Uh, Michael told me, can I tell you something? And I said, yeah, okay, again, what, what am I doing here? No, he told me, uh, thank you for making me believe. So Michael wasn't sure to leave the country, he wasn't sure to say, I want to be an entrepreneur, I don't want to. He said, thanks to you, thanks to your talk, I know that I want to be an entrepreneur, and I will start being an entrepreneur tomorrow. He texted me this morning, this is a real story. He texted me this morning and he said, oh, I, I'm in my entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial venture, I'm, I'm doing well, I'm doing better, my family is getting better as well. For me, it was just a normal talk, but for this person in the audience, it was like, wow. The light bulb started shining, you know? So keep in mind the importance of words. Okay, Charles de Gaulle, the former president of France, said, the action through words, okay? The power of words is something very, very important that we tend to forget. It can be a good asset, could be also a terrible weapon if you say uh, to people that they are stupid, for instance, as we, just, as we just mentioned. That was the second story. The third story is about the MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. There was a professor there called Esther Duflo. Esther Duflo is a genius, I'm not. Uh, and she won the Nobel Prize of Economics a few years back. The MIT and Esther Duflo did an experimentation in Uganda with ladies in Uganda. Just for you to know, a lady in Uganda makes $150 per year. Extreme poverty is $1 per day. Here we are speaking about less than 50 cents per day. Why the experimentation was on ladies? Because ladies tend to have um, less resources than men. That's also sadly worldwide, worldwide stuff. So the experimentation was this. A group of people, a group of ladies, received nothing. Another group of ladies received trainings, business trainings, but let's not go too far. Basic business trainings, basic marketing, basic finance, basic business strategy, etc. Now I will ask you to participate. It's not the last time, but almost. I will ask you to participate. You have red cards and the green on the other side. Which group do you think succeeded the most? Which group saw their incomes increasing? The ones that received nothing? or the ones that receive the training. Maybe you can, you can go ahead. I'm getting old, but I see a lot of green here. Actually, nothing changed for none of them. Nothing changed. Their incomes remain the same. And my question now is, is it only about education? Is education just good enough? If you go to trainings, then you get better, you will make more money, be happier, have a better life? I wish, that's what I'm saying as a professor, but it's sadly not all the time the case. I tricked you a bit here, folks. There was there was a third group that received the trainings plus money, an additional $150. So they doubled their income. What happened to this group? They doubled their incomes. 
So now they are making $300 per year. Still not a lot, but it's twice what they were making. So saying that only education is the answer would be a bit extreme. Sometimes you need to couple it with resources, logistics, money, means at the end of the day. It doesn't mean that if you give them money, then you save their lives. If you give money to those people, and they did it, if you only give them the money, they will spend it. If you don't have money to eat and I give you more money, you will go and buy. You will consume things. So an important part of the experimentation was to make sure that those people were not spending the money, but investing it into their businesses. I said why ladies, because ladies tend to be the, the uh, unfavored population somehow, or the less privileged population in most of the countries. It's also because they invest the money better than men in general. Okay, this is not, uh, I'm a man, so I can say it. Uh, this is, this is, has been proven. So for instance, if you give in the US, you have, when you have kids, you receive money. Per kid, you receive an amount of money. Okay? If you give the money to the guys, they spend more money in uh, gambling, having fun, and other things like that. If you give it to the ladies, they spend more money on education, clothing for the kids, and hobbies for the kids. So giving the money to the, I see ladies smiling here. So giving the, giving the money to the ladies is always a better option, at least for this. But still, you need to monitor, to monitor what they do. I want to leave, folks, that's the fourth story now. I want to leave with a, with a small gift that I want to make to you. This is the emotional part of the talk. Um, the idea here is I want you to think about this person that you consider your mentor, your best instructor, your best educator, this person that, if you think about it, is the person for whom you want to succeed. The person that inspires you and you say, I want to do well in life, I want to succeed, I want to be happy for this person. Just up here for like five seconds so you can think about it. So the person that you want to be proud of you somehow. You have it? Well, I'm asking you to do this. Um, those are my grandparents, by the way. Uh, th th those are my persons. It could be more than one person. My grandparents raised me. Uh, they told me all the values that I have. I hope I have a lot of them, but knowing them, I know I have them. Um, and also, it's not about me anymore. And even when they were there, it was not only about me. It was also about, I want to honor what they did for me. So they uh, gave everything genuinely, be, 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 <laughs> without saying, I told that's the emotional part of the talk, without, without asking for anything in exchange. This is a real instructor. This is a real professor, as the definition I have of it. Uh, I will ask you something. Um, I will ask you to keep in mind those persons who are important to you, your instructors, your professors. And I know we tend to close those talks with a round of applause for the speaker and for the talk. I will not ask you to do it for me. I will ask you to do it for them and for the persons you've been thinking about for the last 10 seconds. Thank you so much.